Beautiful song there shared with us here to begin our time together today. And I do welcome you as we gather on this uh, uh, special day. And it is a special day. I know that's uh, kind of difficult in some respects. Because it's a day of grief and a day of uh, heartache. But it's also a day of celebration. A celebration of a great life. A life that was full. A life that... Uh, lived, lived life uh, to uh, to the extent of sharing his life with others, and that is noted here today. And so we welcome you to celebrate the life of Dennis Rayner uh, on this day. Now, let me just share: death is not the end. Do you get that? It's not the end. Rather, through Christ, we have eternal life. However, the passing of a loved one, often unexpected, is always difficult. Uh, but my prayer is that the peace of God would be real in your hearts first as a family, to the friends and those who share with us here today, because the peace of God is the only thing that can carry us through this. Paul wrote in Philippians that the peace of God, which exceeds anything we can understand, will guard our hearts and minds as we live in Christ Jesus. Amen. Jesus himself said in the Gospel of John, I'm leaving you with a gift, and it is a gift, peace of mind and heart. 
And the peace I give is a gift that the world cannot give. The world has nothing on that. It's only from Christ. And he says, so don't be troubled or afraid. So thank you all for being here today as we celebrate the special man's life today. Let's pray. Lord, it is with great uh, humility, with thanksgiving, with praise to you that we share in a moment like this because we know that death is not the end, that life is with you and you've given life to those who have accepted you and put their faith in you and walk with you today. And we celebrate the life of one who has done that, who celebrates life to its fullest. And Lord, we're here today to not only minister to this family and to the friends, but to remember his life and what he means to us and what uh, the impact of his life. And so, Lord, I pray that you'd speak to our hearts. May the Spirit of God have the freedom uh, to uh, bring that peace upon us that we need and remind us of all the loving memories of Mr. Dennis. We pray this prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. When I see the sunrise in the morning, when I I'm glad he gave his life for me, ain't you? Amen. Oh, uh, I 
feel so humble, uh, so honored this morning. I hope I always stay that way at church. I uh, hope the Lord keeps me humble. It ain't about me. It's all about Him. That's right. And what He does for me each and every day. Uh, such an honor and blessing again to be here this morning. A lot of you, <clears throat> you pray for me this morning, devil. Trying to, uh, allergies and sinuses, and he's trying to take my voice away. But praise God, he's not going to do it. Right. Praise God, he's not going to do it. But you pray for me this morning, brothers and sisters. Uh, you know, um, we, my family. Uh, again, I'm, I'm Dennis Wall. I'm Shane Wall's uh, brother. Uh, love my family. Love my brothers. Back in 1995, we decided to move to Tennessee and moved up to the mountains. And it's always good to come back home. Because so this, uh, I think, I'll always be home. Even though I love Tennessee and got to be there. But good to come back home. Visit family. That's what it's all about anyway. You know, families getting together, having a good time. And I tell you, Brother Dennis... brother sitting there told me last night in his home that uh, first time he ever went over to meet Tony <laughs> said Dennis never come out in the bedroom you went to the bedroom <laughs> never came out <laughs> and I thought about that you know last night how my brother probably failed <laughs> But you know, I had daughters myself, <laughs> granddaughters, and, and yes. now I know. Yes. Even though he loves Shane with all his heart, I know he did. Yes. He loved him with all his heart, was good to him, to him all those years. He had to see that girl he took away. <laughs> he was that type of man. He loved his family. Yes. He loved his youngins. He loved his grandkids. <laughs> And he always wanted to spend time with them. Wherever they were at, that's where he wanted to be. He, 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 uh, he always had a lot about him. You know, uh, even when I moved off, uh, he'd come down and see us in the mountains. And we had a lake there, we're talking lake, and we'd all go camping. We'd go out on the boat and spend time together. I'd never seen, I'd never seen Brother Dennis in a bad way, never seemed like he was mad, always smiling, always having a good time, even though in the bad times it seemed like he was always having a good time. I tell you, church, he carried the light. He carried the torch. He loved his, he loved his family. Uh, I remember when his Dear wife passed away and gone to be with the Lord. Fifty-seven years they were together. Broke his heart, he missed her. Family missed her. But I'm going to tell you this morning, church, I believe he's already found her. That's just the way I believe. Maybe you believe another way. That's okay, too. But I believe he's already, found, already seen her. Already found her. And I believe he's, oh, he's having a time in heaven. He's having a time in heaven this morning, church. I believe the first place and the first person he wanted to see, because here at this church, he honored him, and he was dedicated to that man called Jesus. I don't know, but he didn't live far from here. But there could have been times maybe he had car trouble. Maybe he didn't have a way to get to church. But I know him well enough. He got to church if he had to walk down Black Creek Road, walk up the, the road here and get here. He was here. He loved this church. 
He loved the family of this church. He was a dedicated man of God. I can't say anything bad about him. And I don't even feel worthy this morning to be standing up here in front of you, brothers and sisters. I feel like maybe there needs to be somebody better than I am to stand here and talk about him. But he was, he was a man of God, and he loved his church. He loved his family. So many times, I, I can remember one occasion when they were down at the mountains with us, and we had went out on the boat, and old Dennis, he, he was sitting back there in the chair, and he got an old cane pole. A lot of him, y'all young people probably don't even know what they are, but it's, a old, it's, it's a wooden, like a wooden stick that we went and cut down and trimmed it up and, and uh, hung it out to work it dry out to be straight. And he got that old cane pole off the boat, and he went to catching bluegill just as fast, as fast as he dropped it down, he'd catch one. Calling me in, Shane was taking it off the hook, he'd drop it back down. So, I mean, just as soon as he hit the water, he was catching it. And I remember him looking over at Peyton, and uh, not, 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 not in the fist, but he looked over at Peyton, and he said, son, I'm just trying to show you how to catch you. <laughs> that was Dennis. He didn't, he didn't mean nothing offensive by it, but that was he. And, I, and that's what I loved about him. So many times he could tell jokes. And he put the icing on top of the cake when he said He could tell them to make you laugh no matter what it was. He was just that time. He, 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 it was in him. And he never, I never heard him tell a dirty joke. Never heard him tell one out of the way that was dirty, but he could tell it in a way to make you laugh. I, I thought I was going to die over at my brother's house one night when he was sitting in there telling me. I got to laughing so much, I thought... I was just going to have a heart attack right there in his living room. But he was just that, he, he could tell them so good. And I'm going to miss that. But you know what? You know what, brothers and sisters? I'm going to miss him, and you're going to miss him. Tony, Shane, Peyton Chase, all y'all grandkids, Betty, Lamar. We're going to miss him. But if he could come back, he wouldn't want to come back here. No, he wouldn't want to come back. Because he's with a man called Jesus. He's in a place where there's no more tears, no more heartaches. We're living in a world, brothers and sisters, it seems like it's getting tougher every day. The devil's, I tell you what, the devil is running up and down these roads and homes and in houses in our workplaces, and he is trying, brothers and sisters, because you know why? Because he knows he ain't got long. That's right. That's right. But I'm going to tell you what. Like Brother Dennis done, we got to keep our light and our torch up high. we got to keep our faith strong. I'm not going to be long, brother, I'm, but i but I got I, I to gotta do this. I, I, I mean, I, I just can't leave and I can't stop without without doing this. But I but I want to I want to read a scripture here because I prayed. I didn't know I was going to be here, but when I found out I, I would be, I started praying because I can't do nothing on my own. Never have and never will be. And I always pray, God, you give me something to say. Because I can't, I can't do it. I can't do it. But I've started praying, God, what would you have me to give your family and give your church? And what would Brother Dennis want me to say? And this is what God eased my mind with about 6 o'clock this morning. But in John chapter 11, it talks about Lazarus. <clears throat> and it talks about Jesus telling Martha that a brother's not dead. And brothers and sisters, them 
disciples that walked with Jesus, they seen something. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> they seen a lot of miracles take place. But in John chapter 11 and verse 24, it said, Martha said unto him, I know that he shall rise again in the resurrection at that last day. Verse 25, Jesus said unto her, I am the resurrection and the life, and he that believeth in me, though as he were dead, yet shall he live. And this is the one that I really like. I mean, I like everything in this word of God. From the front, starting in Genesis, to the back in Revelations, I believe it. I believe it all, church. I believe if it's wrote in here, it happened or it's going to happen. There's nothing in here. God's perfect. God ain't never late, and he's right on time all the time. But I'm going to tell you this morning, this verse here says, And whosoever liveth and believeth in me shall never die. Believest thou this. And I'm glad this morning, brothers and sisters, I am a whosoever. I'm glad this morning that one day <coughs> that the Lord seemed fit as me as an old sinner. And I was a sinner. Believe it or not, I, I was a sinner. And, and believe it or not, everybody in here was a sinner. The Bible says we're always filthy rags. Now, some of you might think you're perfect, but you're not. <laughs> I always thought this man right here was perfect too. See, this is just a body here. He's always gone. He's already gone to be with the Lord. But I always thought this man was a perfect man too when I was around him. And I believe he was as perfect probably as you could ever get. But he still wasn't perfect. There was only one that was perfect. But I'm glad today that the Lord seen fit one day to come by where I was at and save an old sinner like me because I was a sinner. I didn't think there was ever no hope for me. I thought I'd probably gone too far, done too much. But you never do go too far and you never do too much that the Lord can't reach down and pick, her, pick you up and pull you up out of whatever pit you're in and save your soul. And today, you might forget me. You might forget me, brothers and sisters. But if you forget Jesus, you've lost it all. You can gain everything in this world, material lives, things in this world, and the devil is good at giving us things. I got things at home, too. I got a boat. I got, nice, I got cars that I thought I'd never have and trucks. He's good at that. And that's okay to have that. But we got to put him first. We got to put him first always. And the Bible says if we put him first, he'll give us all those things. I'm glad this morning I'm saved. And I don't know a lot of you, but I love you. And I want to tell you there's a man called Jesus that loves you. most important thing in this world brothers and sisters the most important thing is knowing him before you leave out of here I think the worst words in the world that could ever be said to a person is depart from me I never knew you I think if you can think of any Words that could be said to anybody. That would be the worst. Depart from me. I never knew you. He's run his course. And he's run it well. But now we got to pick up the torch. And we got to keep on. Because I'm not saying goodbye today. I'm just saying I'll see you again on the other side, Brother Dennis. And I'm looking forward to that day that I can see him again. Amen. God bless you, family.
Dennis and I sung a lot, and I have just, it's just been on my mind so much because I can hear him singing with me. You know, he had such beautiful harmony. You know, he was in a lot of groups here in our choir, and I got that in my notes. But anyway, you know, I, I, this is just a touching song because Dennis just could just harmonize so beautifully, and of course his brother Lamar can play so beautifully too. But anyway, Thank you, gentlemen, and the uh, family, we love you. And uh, just to share a few words today, thank you all for coming. As has already been said, and we're going to continue this time together to just reminisce, if you will, to celebrate the life of Jesus. And I know no better place, as has already been said really here, than go to the Lord's Word, to Him and to the Word. And 
you know, the scripture that comes to my mind sometimes, Rodney and I, we've done this. I don't know what he's got, but, yeah, we use the same scripture, but anyway, if we do, we do. But anyway, I'm just going to start out reading Psalm 23. I guess it's read mostly many, many times at many funerals, but anyway, the Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me, thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil, my cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. And you know, as I thought about this scripture here, I've used it many different times, but one thing about it, of course, is the Lord never leaves us. Amen. The Lord never leaves us. He's always present with us, even in death. Amen. But you know, one of the scriptures this morning, that just, I just, it just spoke. I've had this prepared in a little few days. But anyway, when it says that the Lord is my shepherd, you know what? If the Lord is our shepherd, we will follow him. Amen. That, that's a strong message. We will follow him if he is our shepherd. Amen. And that's really what Brother Dennis did. That's, that's as I reflected on these notes, and I'll continue, there was another scripture, just like that song, I'll follow Jesus all the way. I, I just couldn't help but to think about that song as well, the, the notes I had. And, you know, then John 14, you're familiar with this, I'm sure. Let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go to prepare a place for you, I'll come again and receive you into myself, that where I am you may be also. And whither I go, you know, and the way you know. Thomas said to him, Lord, we, we know not whether thou goest, and how can we know the way? Jesus said unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto me, to the Father, but by me. Dennis knew the truth, Amen. the life of Jesus. And then I can't help but to think about this verse, one of your verse from anywhere, I'm sure, John 3, 6. <coughs> For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son that whosoever believes in him should not perish but have <coughs> everlasting life. <coughs> and then one more scripture. John 8, 12. Couldn't help but think about it on the word follow. Then spake Jesus again unto them, saying, <coughs> I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in <coughs> darkness but shall have the light of life. Dennis had the light of life. Dennis knew Jesus. What a testimony. <clears throat> what a testimony. I mean, you know, it's already been said, and I won't try to repeat anything anyone else has said, but, you know, Dennis grew up in this church, by the way. From the time he was born, <clears throat> you know, 82 years, his family, his mom and daddy, I remember his mom and daddy, Mr. James and his Margie, special people. Special people. They brought them children to church. They grew up in this church. Dennis, like Ted said last night, Dennis probably knows more about this church than anybody. You know, he can tell you different things. Uh, he was Sunday school superintendent for almost 50 years. And, you know, I'm not even here to say, you know, what Dennis has done. You know, Dennis did that for the Lord. Amen. He Amen. gave the Lord a praise. The point I'm getting to here, really, you know, is that Dennis loved Jesus. Amen. He had Jesus in his life. Amen. You know, he served as uh, chairman of the board for many years, a deacon, longtime choir member. I remember his mother, the choir director, when I first started coming to church here, <laughs> Miss Margie. There's a choir right over here, and I remember it very well. You know, and Miss Margie, it was Miss Margie, but I loved her. I tell you right now, she was a great lady. Uh, and Dennis being in the choir for many years, we sung in the choir together. We went, we even went to the Benson scene, you know, a few a couple years ago, and just had a great time, you know. And and you know, him and I and Hollis, his 
close, closest friends sitting right here. We sung many times together. And I know he and Dennis sung many times together in a group. I think they were a group. Y'all had a group, a butch, I believe, years ago. And But Dennis loved music. And, you know, I can't help but reflect on this. This, this is just, I don't know, I, I guess I, I kind of get this way when we have choir practice. You know, our books still have the names on all our people that's been in choir. We have several musicals, you know, Christmas <coughs> musicals, Easter musicals, other books, and they got they put their name on them, stick them on there with a sticker and write their name on them. And you know, it's getting to where we have actually probably almost more passed away than we do live. And Dennis is going to be added to the list. So I'm gonna come and pick up his book. You know, it's just gonna be, you know, another thought about Dennis, but that's okay, though, as has already been said. Dennis had the hope of Jesus. He knew Jesus Christ. You know, um, he loved music, no question about it. He loved Davy and Benson. He loved uh, the Isaacs. He loved all kinds of music. It was bluegrass music. He loved that kind of music. He loved it. I, I, I did think about one other thing. This was a long time ago. And, you know, Dennis could crack you up, and I'll say more about that in a minute, as his brother's already said. But, you know, we used to have Christmas programs when Stoner Harrison was living. You know, so many of you remember her. And, you know, she was a great lady, and, you know, uh, uh, we, she would direct our Christmas programs, and I can remember right in here, right here, and I don't think the church might only been like this then, I don't remember, but anyway, you know, we had a Christmas program, we were all dressed up, you know, with shepherd outfits or whatever, out, wise men outfits, I can't remember. But, and I, I would have, I thought back, I said, I wonder if it was Brent Carpenter. But anyway, when we were <laughs> doing it, you know, one of the lines was, the sky's on fire! <laughs> <laughs> and Dennis cracked up, he just pure right in the middle of everything going on. <laughs> and you know, he just saved, he started laughing. You just, you had to go with him. I mean, you couldn't. I don't care if the program was going on or what. When Dennis started, he would just, you know, he would just get it going to it and tip with you to death. And, you know, you may be not even going to understand this, but I always addressed him at work. And I'll say more about that man in the hip church. What say, Rana? <laughs> you know, that, that's what that says is, what you say, Rainer? Uh, I'll always say, what say, Rana? <laughs> and he would say, or he'd say, I'll rub B. <laughs> That's how we greet you. He would put that, oh, excuse me, he would put that emphasis on that I'll rub B. <laughs> so, Dennis, you put that emphasis on the I'll rub B. Had a good time. Even in the hospital, you know, last week actually, uh, tomorrow, a week ago, when he was in ICU, one of the times I went to see him. And um, he was turning his back toward the window when I went in. And the nurse was over there. And as soon as I got in, I just kind of got close enough to him. I, he didn't see me. Or, uh, you know, he didn't know I was there. But I said, what I say, Ralph? <laughs> and he jerked. <laughs> and the nurse said, he knows who you are. <laughs> and bless his heart, I went around there and looked. And he, that was the first time he had his eyes open. That was the first time I had seen his eyes open in ICU at all. But and, and I can't tell you how I felt when I looked at his eyes. They were they were rolling. They were. I just I get I don't know. I, 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 it was hard. It was so hard because he he couldn't say nothing. He just looked at me so humbly, like I want to say something or whatever, but he, he couldn't. But anyway, precious memories. Loved his family, as already said, Joyce, Tony, Betty, his grandchildren, and no question, Dennis was a happy, a humorous, a great attitude, a compassionate, humble person. And I can't, I'm going to have to get food here pretty, pretty quick, but I could send a few all day and talk about Dennis. Amen. And the memories in his church. Amen. I could go on and on and on and on. And as already said, he could make you laugh to tears. He was infectious. When you started listening to him, the people, the people at work at Agri Supply, when he started telling his tale, you know, story, Scott worked there, Scott he worked there, they just, just drawn to it, and he, 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 he just could go on and on and on. 
you know, and uh, so, you know, I, I, I'll touch on a few of these, but, you know, I, I might miss them, and they'll correct me if I do, but I, I always remember him telling about the story about Miss Margie and the house that they lived in inside the pond down here. You know, and the boys growing up, and them boys, I don't know how Miss Margie had any sense. <laughs> Putting up with three boys. But they tied a rope across the door the doors in the house. I guess maybe, maybe that high, I guess, whatever, maybe we well, couldn't see it real clear. And then one of them hollered, Lamar's in the park! <laughs> and Margie comes flying through the house. And you know what happened this March? He hit that rope, boom! And one of the times it kept with me when I did, in fact, uh, when we were at the hospital, Rodney was over there one day, and Lamar got, to, even in the ICU room, I, I thought they was going, I thought, like, you don't rush, they go going to rush this place. But Lamar started telling the stories, <laughs> and I swore it one right after another, and, and he's the same way, but then this was that they could just tell you stories. But I remember one of the stories Lamar told that day, I think, that they got in trouble, and they all went out on the boat in the middle of the pond. And Margie was on the bank hollering. You wait till your daddy get talking. Now, I don't know if y'all know about uh, Margie and SC. Now, who was it told me last night? Was it you, Jay? That Tony was uh, a lot Miss Margie. <laughs> <laughs> I believe she could holler like Miss Margie. <laughs> uh, is that right? Uh, Tony, he Shane said that. <laughs> But, but anyway, and if you knew Mr. James, loved him to death, he comes home, goes out there, come on in, boys. <laughs> like he doesn't ever have, whatever. <laughs> I remember going to Camp Dixon one time, Joyce, all the bunch of us went, and, you know, we were there and we stayed overnight or whatever, and, they was a, I don't know why we did, but Dennis and Joyce and me and Jackie slept in the freezer room. <laughs> you say, what? Well, they had a big old freezer. A big old, it had big doors and, you know, put the stuff in cold in there. And that was the only where we had a bed to sleep. We had to cook, I think, the next morning while we slept there. And yeah, I talked to Dennis about sleeping. He said, that freezer cranked up every 15 minutes. <laughs> I could hear him say that like that. <laughs> Um, and again, I'm moving on. This gentleman's already talked about fishing. You know, you, know, that's, you could talk about fishing a long time, but I'm going to tell you about one fishing trip. You know, and, and I, I'll go ahead and say this. Brother Dennis was kindly, I guess, frugal. <laughs> Tight. I guess that's a Johnson down in Lingo. Tight. Well, you know, talking about the fishing and his boat pulling them in, well, we stopped at this place on a choir mountain trip. And it was a place that, I think they were trout, I'm pretty sure, but it was a place you paid for it by the length of the pound. And all you had to do was drop the hook in. I mean, it looked like you were really fishing. All, the fish were just swarming in there. And all you had to do was just put the hook in there. Well, I think the first one, Brother Dennis, he goes and throws it in there and pulls it up. Mm, I'm going to throw that in the back. <laughs> And I'll never forget the story that Susie shared with the choir sometime recently. You know, they, they were great friends, you know, Susie and Ricky and Donald and Lois and um, uh, uh, Janice and Joyce, and they were going trips. And, you know, again, back to the tight story, I mean, they were in Charleston, you know. If you've ever been to Charleston, South Carolina before, and if you've ever gone into a restaurant before, you know that they ain't cheap. You know, you know there's no, no restaurant in Charleston cheap. So they go into a restaurant and see the menu and look at the price and everything. And then he said, what we going to do, bro? <laughs> and, and Ricky, you know, if you knew Ricky too, we're going to pay the bill. <laughs> so Brother Dennis had to give up something, you know. <laughs> Whatever. But anyway, um, I could go on. I could go on, and I just got to finish real quickly here. But, you know... I've got to say this. I mean, I love Snap Parrot to death. He was my preacher one time, but him and Melvin. But, you know, Dennis could imitate people well. You know, he, he, he just, that was one of his things. He, he could imitate people. He could talk just.
like Mr. Snappy. <laughs> and you know, we went up to Mr. Snappy, he had a whole car load in his car on that trip. We all went together, you know, but we stayed at Beach Mountain. If you've ever been, been to Beach Mountain, you know it's high and steep. Well, Dennis, he'd tell a story, yeah, he, you know, I can't talk like Snappy. But anyway, he would start telling us, yeah, we went up to Beach Mountain, and I had the car mashed in the park and it started rolling back. <laughs> But that's just Dennis. It can just keep you from going. State fair trips, good gracious, he and Joyce, and me and Jackie would go and love, Joyce loved to ride. Let me tell you something. She loved the double Ferris wheel. I don't know which one loved it the best, me or her. But Jackie and Dennis stayed on the ground. <laughs> Horseshoes, good gracious. Woo! Lord, that much. Fred Coates, Hugh Baker, Othel Minshew, Dennis, myself. Man, we, we had some good times, good gracious. One Sunday afternoon, we got in so much, it was in December. I mean, we, we, would, get, we would really get into it. It was cold. We ran out throwing horses. It got so cold. And then the lights got dark. And so we got so into it that we left, I think it was down here at Dennis's, and there lights outside or whatever, we'll be seated. So we went behind the funeral home, Rose and Graham funeral home, men's shoe den, and throw horseshoes right on. You could blow smoke out of your mouth. But you know, we got into it, but they, Dennis and Joyce were there for me. They were in a time, one time, and it's just great to be with, and this horseshoes was a fun time. Um, and then, I, I, I kind of got a hook finished, but anyway, um, he told me one time when I started taking guitar lessons, he said, uh, you need to ask some more. <laughs> right. And I could sit here all day about that story. But Lamar never would say yes until probably a year and a half, two years. So. But I always treasure that because Dennis said we need to ask some more play. We're playing now and praise the Lord. The Lord sent The Lord sent it. Amen. Amen. He worked with Agro Supply many years. I don't always say he was. Tell him with the fire and keep him cracked up. Remember, we used to go set up the farm show at the seafood market. I see Andy back there. He's, he's familiar with that. And we would stop at the farmer's market seafood and just have a good time together. So I'm going to finish up here, but I want to just finish by saying um, it was amazing to hear Tony share how peaceful things went. You know, really. A tear came in his eye, she said, and she wiped it. Betty came in after Tony had wiped a tear, and he was, you know, still living. But Betty came in and he says, he's not breathing. It was that peaceful, you know. I mean, that, that, I mean, death is death, but, you know, it was peaceful. But, you know, as this gentleman's already said, and Brother Rodney, Hard it is to have seen Dennis like he was in that ICU room and in that hospital. He, he was, he was healed. He was healed. Death, <coughs> and he would not want to go on like that. But the last thing I'm going to finish with is that Dennis knew Jesus as Lord and Savior of his life, the greatest gift of all. And you know what? Jesus can be your Savior too, Amen. if you would just let him. Because John 3, 16 says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. And then that word follow again from John 8, 12. Then spake Jesus again unto him, saying, I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have Bye. 
in darkness now will safely lead me oh if it wasn't for the lighthouse my ship would sail no that lives around us they all see only tell that old lighthouse down we all know the big ships they don't sing by this way anymore it really ain't no use that that old thing standing around but then my mind goes back to that old stormy night when just beautiful songs shared here today with a great message uh, about a wonderful person and thankful to, to these two men and I won't uh, prolong very long either my, my uh, everybody here uh, fusses at me that I preach too long no, no, no. but uh, I'll, I'll keep it short because we uh, we have celebrating to do Amen. in life uh, Brother Dennis, uh, after I got to know him, used to call me always when I came up in church and come over here where he sat. He said, how you doing, boss man? Uh, now, several times I've been called boss man. My wife's been around. She said, why is people calling you boss man? <laughs> What's that mean? I said, I don't know. She, said, <laughs> she was a little... Uh, apprehensive about that but Dennis you know he was just how you doing boss man very just cordial accepting of people very easy to get to know to love and to share time with uh, when I was a boy they had a name for a man like Dennis and they use that word still today but they called him they called them characters <laughs> and he was a character <laughs> He was a character. Back to my wife. My wife, you know, asked him one time about what favorite, what was his favorite fish that he liked the best. And he said, sheephead. Like sheephead. And he said, now let me tell you about sheephead. 
when you bring them up, they'll kind of look at you from the side there. And then they'll say, Bah! About fell in the floor when you come down one time. But that, that was him. That was him. And I really couldn't believe some of the stories that I ever heard from his family. And Lamar sharing. And him sharing. And I'm going... Your mother should have beat y'all half to death. <laughs> you shouldn't have got away with all of that. She was a strong woman. <laughs> but what kind of men they've become. Wonderful men. You know, it might be in a character, someone who was unique and interesting and amusing, a real character, and he was loved because of that characteristic. But you know what? He wasn't just a character. He was a man of character, a man of character, a person who valued honesty and integrity and uh, would pay the price whatever needed uh, for worthy of trust and earning delight from his family and from his friends. He always wanted people to have, you know, to enjoy life just as he did. And I think he did, didn't you, when you were around him? There was no other way to do that. 1 Timothy 6.11 says, But you, Timothy, are a man of God. So uh, stay away from these evil things. He had just mentioned certain things that you shouldn't be a part of because they'd lead you down the wrong road. But yet, he said, Pursue righteousness and a godly life along with faith and love and perseverance and gentleness. And what a great description of Dennis Rayner that led that life. And again, he, he wasn't perfect. None of us are. But, you know, striving to be what God called him to be in this world. And God gave him a great character to share with others. To live life to the fullest, as I've said already. He, he You know, that was a part of who he was. Live life. Live life. Too many of us are just existing in this world today. That's all we're doing. Kind of just floating alone and not really living. God created us to live life. He gave us this time to live life abundantly. And that's not talking about materialistic things. It's meaning live life to the fullest of what he's given us here. So we can enjoy life even greater in eternity. That's why he did that. Dennis lived life to the fullest. And uh, the, Paul said this at one point in time when he uh, was uh, in jail, was in prison. And he said, for me, living means living for Christ. And dying is even better. It's a gain, he said. Amen. But if I live, I can do more fruitful work for Christ. So I really don't know which is better. I'm torn between the two. And and. Of course we would be torn between the two, wouldn't we? Yes. To stay here with our loved ones and care, but to be with Jesus, hmm, that's even greater. Paul refused to say, I, I, I just wish I'd hurry up and die and stop suffering and be with Christ. No, he wanted to do what Christ called him to do. And Dennis did also. He's always pressing forward in life, wanted to live his life to the fullest. Uh, this man, though he was very, you know, humorous and had a character about him, he was a very emotional person too. I saw that in him when he talked about the Lord and his life with Jesus. He would get emotional about that. Last time I talked and he was able to talk in the hospital, he got very emotional one day because of people coming in and praying for him and to seeking the Lord for his blessing. That kind of attitude uh, is what we need in life too, to live to the fullest. It's kind of attitude reminds me of the little boy in school who, asked, who was asked by his teacher, he said, Johnny, what's your philosophy of life? And he said, I like it a whole lot. <laughs> Dennis liked it a whole lot. Amen. And he lived it a whole lot. He lived it for his family, he lived it for his faith, lived it for his friends. 
And he shared in that passage passionate uh, for a life to live for him too. And he loved others selfishly. Uh, Paul writes to the church saying, if I don't die, that's okay because I'm in prison getting to share the gospel and people are getting saved. I, I really think Dina, Dennis, you know, his gift was that humor in the sense of pulling people in and being able to share his life with them and share Christ. Uh, Paul didn't want to waste his life and he spent it investing in others and I believe that's true about Dennis invested in others, gave of himself, first to his family and as a whole and to friends and to his church. But he anticipated and expected eternal life with Christ. Paul had no question of where he was going and what was going to happen to him when he died. He said, for me to live is Christ and to die is gain. And that word gain is a bookkeeping term. It means to calculate a profit. You tally your receipts. I don't have, I don't, I'm not getting into a, a, an accounting class here, but to give you a meaning here. You tally your receipts, subtract your expenses, and the difference is profit. You see, Paul saw die, dying as a profit, as a gain. Uh, and it is a gain in the sense, ultimately, we gain a new body. We gain a better view of Christ. We gain a, the presence of other saints who have gone on before us. We gain life with no more pain, no more tears, no more hospitals, Amen. no more sin. And one day, no more goodbyes. <laughs> no more goodbyes. We gain the fulfillment Jesus promised as Rodney over here. We call, my, my wife calls him Rodney number two, Rodney number one. But he was, uh, she was uh, singing his praises the other day. And I said, well, wait a minute here. But that's beside the point. <laughs> but he was sharing just a moment ago about going to a place and preparing a place. And Jesus has done that. But you know the greatest thing about it is not that he uh, prepared a place, but that he said, where I am, you may be also. Jesus is there. That makes the difference. Jesus lived a perfect life, died a sacrificial death for, for us and he victoriously rose from the grave to give us life eternal. That's what's important. So Dennis lived life to the fullest here. And he's gained eternal life in the sense of Jesus Christ. Knowing that he surrendered his life to him. Not because he was uh, you know, a good person. Not because he was had a good character. But it's because of Jesus that he has the opportunity to experience it. I love the story of that little girl who was visiting her grandmother in the country, and one evening they sat outside and enjoyed the, the view of the stars at night. You, she couldn't see them in the city with all the lights, so she, she was amazed by the stars in the heavens, such sparkling <laughs> brilliance. And the little girl had never seen, having been raised in the city, so she was in awe of that beauty, and she said to her grandmother, if heaven is so beautiful on the wrong side, what must, what must it be on the right side? How beautiful it is because of Jesus. Dennis, we love you very much, and this is God's goodbye. And we'll see you again in Christ. Let's pray. Father, you've given us the joy of knowing a special person in our lives today, and we thank you for that. We praise you for that. We honor you for that. We can't, you know, in this little bit of time, express all there needs to be about a person who has lived a life as full as Dennis has, but he has lived his life. That, that is the message. He's lived his life. So let's take it now and go with our lives. Taking the, the things that he has implanted in our lives, the characteristics he's taught us, the, the things he's shared with us, <coughs> help us to take those and use them in our own lives because those are things that God put in his life. Help us to honor you through him. 
that we may glorify you, Father. We thank you, Lord, that you have shared your time with us. You, you're always with us. We don't have to invite you into here because you promised to be with us always. You're with us wherever we are, and you promise to be with us as we go through times like this. Pray for this family. I pray for friends. I pray for the church body. I pray, Lord, you would get peace, only that you can give, that you'd guide us into our walk of life, knowing and remembering that Jesus Christ died for us to give us eternal life. Through him, we can live life eternally as Dennis has accepted in his life. And we can join together with him in the future. And we thank you for that. We look forward to that with great hope. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Would you stand, please? Thank you. 